Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where we build towards the future. Today we're going to be venturing out past the alien planet and onto its moon called Titan. In our real solar system, the moon Titan is actually one of the moons of Saturn, which is pretty cool to be able to put in a game. Now we're not going to stay there very long, just because it's supposedly inhabited by space spiders or what they like to call saboroids. Luckily, though, we have a very quick vessel to use. The crawler is capable of traveling up to 2,000 kilometers per jump, putting us right in range of it. However, the moon Titan is actually only about 35 kilometers from the alien planet, which is pretty convenient if you're already on this side of the solar system. From a distance, it kind of looks like, you know, Mars, the red planet. But as you get closer, you realize that its atmosphere is actually a lot shorter. So we're looking at only probably about 2,000 meters tall at the most. But luckily, this atmosphere is thick enough where we can actually use our thrusters. And the moon's gravity is actually the same as the Earth-like moon. It's about 0.25. What we're going to do is I'm just going to approach here. As I approach, you might notice that, indeed, my atmospheric thrusters can work to slow us down. But the oxygen level actually doesn't change. So that means we probably can't breathe on this moon. Fortunately, though, I mean, we have enough oxygen tanks, we have our own ice on board, and worst case, we can always get more ice on the way. There are several different lakes around this moon, which are pretty impressive for their color, and make it convenient so no matter where you're at on the moon, you can kind of find extra ice to go and recharge your O2 along with your hydrogen. This moon is pretty convenient, too, because most of the ores are found right on the surface. And believe it or not, this moon actually is supposed to contain about 4% platinum. So if you're looking for a good place to find platinum where you don't have to go asteroid hopping from one place to another, I'd say this one's pretty good. Except, if you start off on the Earth-like planet, it's going to take you a long time to get here. I'm not going to spend too much time on here, like I said before, because... I can already see the signal from the beacon on my map, and I don't want to attract any unwanted visitors for sure. Just look at that ice. It's definitely not the standard blue that you find on all the other planets, or even gray. This one seems to be like a bright turquoise. Kind of impressive when you think about the graphics that goes into this game. I'm just going to drive on it for a minute or two. Stock up on some ice, maybe refill my O2 generators and then check out some parts of the other planet. Might even do a flyby of the beacon over there just to see what the heck it is. And we're off. Didn't take very long. I cut out that section for your convenience, but it really only took about maybe 10 to 15 minutes to collect enough ice to throw into the O2 generator. Not bad, really. 
I love how this crawler can just easily climb up these dunes. And worst case scenario, if you can't make it up a dune, I just fire on the atmospheric thrusters forward and it'll carry me right up the hill. It's kind of a easy moon to actually transverse compared to the moon for the Earth-like planet. It looks like the surface is pretty smooth. There's only some rocky parts here and there, but not like the other moon. The other moon, there's jagged edges. There's different spikes sticking out, and it's pretty difficult to actually drive around. Ah, uh, I gotta move that forward thruster, man. I tell you, every time I take off from an atmospheric planet or moon, it seems to mess up my front gear. That's uh, probably the smoke you're seeing in the front. Hmm, looks like some kind of safe zone marker around this beacon. I don't know how close I can get to it without attracting a bunch of attention. But you know what? I'm going to try it anyways. Just going to park right here. We have enough hydrogen right now. It should keep the vessel up. And let's go exploring. I honestly haven't seen one of these up close before, so this is actually unique to me. Hmm. Interesting. You can see right through it, but it doesn't look like there's anybody around. It just looks kind of like a small space station, I guess. I don't see any guns or anything on it. Well, better head back before I attract any attention. On to the next place. The next place is actually quite a bit of distance from us. Technically, it's on the other side of the Earth-like planet from us. Which from here is, shoot, man, it's, it's almost 4,000 kilometers. But luckily, with the crawler using the jump drive, we can make it 2,000 kilometers in just one shot. So really, it'll only take us two charges, which for this system and a large reactor on board, it actually takes about nine minutes to recharge fully. Altogether, gameplay, it's going to be about 18 minutes to be able to get there. So most of it, I just cut out that time for your convenience. Got to admire how the graphics are specifically for the jump. So that was the first jump and didn't quite make it there, but you can see we're kind of halfway. And then finally at the end, we're able to make it all the way to the planet. However, I'm going to jump one or two more times just to be right at the planet so it doesn't take as long to actually reach the gravitational field. From a distance, the planet looks kind of rocky, and it's not actually that big. It's a lot smaller than the Earth-like planet, but the gravity is about the same. I do like the bluish hue around it, though. It must be the reflection of the ice or something. It's kind of a desolate planet that's always cold. There's usually no intruders or nobody inhabiting it, which is a good thing if you want to pretty easy place to start out i'd recommend this place the planet triton is almost completely covered in ice and it has a lot of mountainous areas but the mountainous areas are kind of covered with snow so it's not too hard to drive on them as long as you got about 12 wheel drive on your rover The atmosphere is actually breathable also, and it's it's actually quite thick. I think the atmosphere goes all the way up to about 40,000 feet or so, or 40,000 meters or so, which makes it ideal for trying to leave the planet and for landing on the planet if you have a larger spaceship. For that, 
you know, I recommend since you're on an icy place anyways, just go ahead and start out with hydrogen. You're not going to find platinum on it anyways, and there's definitely no uranium. So stock up on that hydrogen, throw a couple of hydrogen generators on, and you're good. You'll be able to blast off into the next area. And if you want, I mean, you could always travel all the way across the Titan and find that platinum. But it might be easier just to jump asteroid to asteroid until you get there. The only real hazardous thing on this planet is that it's going to suck the power out of your suit fairly quick. Mainly because of the cold. So you got to watch your levels on your suit in order to make sure that you don't run out of power and start draining your health. Also, the periodic snowstorms will pop up from here or there. Luckily, we were able to land while there was no storm in place. In our real solar system, the planet Triton is actually the largest moon of Neptune. Which is kind of cool when you think about it, that there's a place like this in our actual solar system. I don't think too many humans have actually visited there, if any at all, and I doubt it'll happen in the future, but it'd be interesting if we could. Maybe if somebody actually invents a real jump drive system, it'll take a lot less time to actually venture there. Ah... Uh, here comes that snow I was talking about. I guess we uh, landed with success because we didn't have the snow, but now since it started snowing, you'll see what I mean about not being able to see after a while. The vision just completely goes out the window. Starting out on this planet, if you're in survival mode, what I would suggest is actually to start out next to the ice, but not on the ice. Because you're going to need stone in order to create components, you know, mine them and stuff like that. So I would start on the edge, where you're still close to the hydrogen. But then again, anywhere you start really on this planet, you could just pick up snow and create hydrogen generators. What I typically do is I start out with one wood turbine, then I build, you know, the basic refinery, and then I have my assembler, and then a O2 H2 generator, and I just start picking up some snow or ice and throwing it in that sucker. Once I get to a certain amount of materials, I throw on a hydrogen generator and I no longer need the windmill. Uh, I thought I couldn't make it up this hill. This snow just doesn't provide enough traction. I've even lowered my wheel friction, or increased the wheel friction, sorry about that, in order to try to make it up, but it's, it's just too slippery and too much of an incline. Luckily, like I was saying, we have plenty of ice around, so I'm just going to use these hydrogen engines and some atmospheric thrust to actually get up this hill. I think overall we could just use atmospheric thrusters to get up the hill, but it takes a little bit longer. And I kind of wanted to just get to a certain point where I can keep driving because this foggy snow really makes it hard to see where you're going. I'd rather not run into something. Yeah, there we go. We're kind of crawling up it now. The only downside of this crawler, I think, is I can't put bigger wheels on it. I mean, these wheels are the 5-meter wheels, but it would be cool if it was also a large crawler so I could use the full-size 5-meter wheels. That way I could easily climb up a lot more stuff. But then again, if we try to jump with a large vessel, you're limited kind of 500 to 800 kilometers per jump just because of the weight of the vessel. So that's something to consider also. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna go very far. I'm not surely sure if this is a cliff or not, and I'd rather not fall off of it. 
Uh, maybe I should just wait this out until it passes. There we go. That was actually only about a 10 minute storm. Which puts us at a good point anyways to be able to see everything. I can't believe we kind of made this up the short hill through that storm. I mean, that that is a lot of snow. There's not a thing of stone around except for on the mountainous areas. This is actually a pretty good crawler if you ask me. I think I'm going to try to make it to the top of the other mountain so we can get a better view of everything. I think maybe I will probably build a base or something here, just temporary, so I can update these small atmospheric thrusters in the back and switch them up for some big ones. These small ones just really don't have the oomph you're looking for. I mean, the hydrogen thrusters are okay, but in space there's not as much resistance. When you're on a planet like this, though, the small forward atmospheric thrusters really just don't have enough push to actually make it up in the atmosphere. I mean, you can accelerate forward, but you're not moving up necessarily. You can't really go at more than a five degree incline with them. It's kind of an interesting planet. It looks like the clouds above are just like a, a hazy smoke trail. You know, like somebody had a campfire in the background or something. Come on, we can do it. I know you're a crawler, but you can fly. I like how there's different small ravines and grooves basically in these mountains where if you really needed to you could walk up this mountain say if you built a base at the top you could easily just walk up or down if you didn't have your ship or if your ship broke down There we go. Nice touchdown. Now, let's see if I can cruise to one of the peaks around here. It does take a little while to actually gain traction. I think that front left wheel being broken like that probably isn't helping me much. But I ran out of large steel tubes, so I'm kind of stuck with what I got right now. I'd have to actually put up a small base in order to build another one. Because the survival kit just does not have it in its inventory to build. Hey, look at there. It looks like it's pretty smooth peak up here. I bet you I can make it to the higher elevation over there. The decent thing here, too, is even though we're at a higher elevation, our O2 still says low, which means we still have enough to breathe in a sense. We might lose slightly, but it's not going to lose to the point where we can't breathe without an easy tank, and it's not going to consume as much oxygen while we're up here. So if you're planning on building a base here, you could probably use one of the air vents to pressurize your base and it will draw the low level oxygen into your base to pressurize it instead of actually having to produce oxygen. Well, thanks for watching. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and please leave any of your comments, tips, or questions in the comment section so other viewers can actually check it out 